Excuse me, are you Mrs. Chandler? Yes. Yeah, I have an appointment with you. Oh, um, I understand you want to talk to me about Tim's Tim, Tim, mum. Right, my son, right, yes, sorry, you're a little bit... If you recognise the potential drama of this parent meeting, then this programme can help you with some useful skills to handle it successfully. Okay, so what can we do then to help OK, um, well, obviously, we have, we have put some procedures in place now. Parents of children who have special educational needs are often the most anxious parents. So therefore, for a teacher, it is particularly important that they develop these communication skills to be able to work effectively and have a good relationship with parents of children with special educational needs. Thank you so much for coming today. It's We've come to a day where teachers learn positive communication skills. Conciliation strategies, useful to all staff who have contact with parents, are explained and demonstrated through a course run by Partnership with Parents, Kent LEA's support organisation for parents of children with special educational needs. Really, really nice to see. The parents were telling us that they felt intimidated in school, that they felt they weren't being listened to, that they weren't being given the information that they needed about their own child. So it was decided that on this particular course, we could teach what we loosely call conciliation skills, which includes body language, active listening, perceptual positioning, principled negotiation, handling objections, all these kind of skills, which they've already got, but we just wanted to make them aware of that and to build on them even more. Before I ask you to all sit down... With the teachers out of their comfort zone, they're asked to draw and describe how they feel as the course starts. schools and so on, I, I certainly felt nervous, yeah. but we were apprehensive to start with. This is me when we arrived. I felt I was drowning in the middle of a puddle because I didn't know what was going on. So I put out how, so I'm a bit nervous and not sure what's going to be happening. We're feeling like this, but how do you think parents are feeling when they come out of their comfort zone as well? And maybe we don't always think about that because we're so engrossed in how we're feeling and how we want things to go. The role plays we're about to see demonstrate how feelings on the part of both the parent and the member of staff can affect behaviour. Well, I want you to sort it out. I'm not frustrated. I'm angry. I'm very angry. I was told that this was a good school for my son. In this meeting at the moment, I'm feeling quite yeah, frustrated and disappointed. One, the parent is feeling as upset and as angry as she is with, with us. The skills that I've learned today, which I will definitely take with me, is to respect other people's feelings and not just think about myself, how I feel in this situation, but to think of the whole picture um, and consider how other people feel. Adopting an overview of the situation leads to the importance of providing the appropriate environment and atmosphere for a successful meeting. I think that you shouldn't have a desk between you and no, the not at all. It should be, everyone should be at the same level. No one should feel that there's a position of authority in the room, especially when discussing sensitive issues. Two of the teachers experimented with different meeting scenarios. Comfortable chairs of equal level, blocking phone calls, and clutter-free surroundings are helpful things to consider, as well as providing tissues and drinking water. Back in the classroom, with 55% of communication being through body language, the teachers engaged with a few moves to master their technique on the meeting room floor. OK, freeze, you two. Susie and Angie took time out to practice. When people agree on a subject, they tend to mirror one another. They lean in, make eye contact, and smile. It's far it's too, too right. much like, oh. temperature. I like to relax reading books, oh, read books for hours on it. I feel like I'm drawn to Sue now because we're definitely agreeing on the same subject. Um, my body wants uh, to move in, to be open, to smile more, nod more. When they disagree, the opposite happens. Their body positions no longer match. One pulls away from the other and they cross their limbs. Yeah, but you're saying this fug thing about football. I feel. Um, comfortable like this because I don't really want to look at her while we're disagreeing. Um, although I am feeling that like I'm leaning back because she's been quite aggressive that I kind of want to remove myself from the situation. But I definitely don't want to be leaning in at all at this time. I feel that I need to pull you in to actually listen to me. I feel like um, I'm approaching you, but you keep dismissing me. But I, I have to come forward for you to take on board what I'm actually saying. Consciously using positive body language during a tricky disagreement can turn a situation around. 
associated with it and you're right really they could have a, I wouldn't have felt comfortable like this only that we've had to reach a compromise to be able to do this otherwise we both we wouldn't have been able to sit this closely it's too intense when you're having a disagreement to sit this closely together I felt much better because we actually kind of come to a compromise that, that we I couldn't really lean in and be aggressive no I couldn't <laughs> um, I wanted to yeah find an agreement and yeah it was too intense to be moving our bodies I into felt like it. we were drawn to each other because we were actually trying to agree, agree. yeah because the body language is making us agree more yeah. um, I've had an issue with um, dealing with a parent who um, son has behavioral issues um, going in having her come in for meetings and uh, using my um, body language I was tense she was tense and the meeting was unsuccessful However, if I had known to use um, body language, I could have disarmed her before she entered the classroom and therefore the meeting probably would have been more successful. With comfy chairs taken and bodies in positive communication mode, it was time to practice the next important skill, active listening. I think it's really important to demonstrate that you value the parent's views. No one knows the child better than the parent. So I think it's really important that the teacher actually acknowledges, and one way of doing this is actually using active listening, that you've listened to what the parent is saying, and actually you really do value their opinion. I'm not coming in here to have a go or to be cross or angry. I just want to know that you are aware of his needs, that the school has passed on that information, because obviously I want my son, I know that he is not the most well behaved, I know that he's not necessarily the brightest child in the world, but he had lots of support in the last school and I want to make sure that he's got that same support. So you want us to make sure that we know that your child is not necessarily well behaved and that he um, not maybe the brightest child in the class, but that he needs the support put in place and you want to make sure that we are doing that because in the last So how does that feel for the parent yeah. now? I found that really useful, that was really good. I could tell you were listening to what I was saying and you were empathising. But it was, at times I wanted to say something and you were still talking. OK, so I need to shorten what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. But he's also trying to make friends with his children in the local area and that's really difficult because obviously with different changes and things like that, he's a new kid on the block and they don't particularly want to know. So you're worried about his friendships because of the move? Yeah. That was a lot better in the sense that you weren't quite so long. There still were times where I wanted to interrupt, but <laughs> yeah. it was a lot better. And I felt that I wasn't just having someone talk to me continually and just repeating everything and making me feel stupid, <laughs> but you were actually summarising the key points. Yeah. So I knew you were paying attention. Yeah, it's hard to know when to consolidate what someone has said without trying to cut them off. It's quite tricky to look for that pause in the conversation. I think it's interesting that, um, looking at the parents in our school, they often find that the most successful um, teachers, the most intimidating, and I think that's because we tend to put down the professional shutter when we're meeting with them, whereas the skills of active listening basically would be that you engage on an emotional level with the parent as well and show that, them that you're human and you're adult to adult, not some scary professional that they may have issues with because of their own childhood experiences. So what else can you do to help my boy? Right, well obviously we are trying to do as much as we can. I've got a big enough workload and enough students I, in my class already. It doesn't I'm matter, it doesn't matter, do it's my son. Well obviously you're not doing enough. You know what, I'm gonna go and take this a little bit further. I'm going to go, I'm, I, don't I need to talk to your headmistress. I you? need to go and do a little bit more about this, I'm sorry. So how can you avoid a dramatic meeting like this one? Hello, Mrs. Stevens. How can I help? Jill, the course facilitator, gave Sam some coaching. Three times this past week or so, I've been in here. Letters home and three phone calls. What is it with you and Bradley? What don't you like about him? Well, it's not that we don't like him, Mrs. Stevens. It's just uh, what exactly is it that you're? I'm going to stop you already. Yeah. You, you need, I suggest, to say to her that you're, you recognise how she's feeling. You see, right. so you're sorry that you feel, uh, that, that um, Mrs Yvonne feels that um, you, you don't like Bradley, 
could you could she explain right. a bit more as to why? Why, why does she think that you don't like him? Right. So you need okay. to obviously recognise that with her first. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming in, Mr. Stevens. And I'm really, I'm really sorry that I can see you're obviously very upset about the whole situation, and I can understand that. But I exactly what is it that, that you're actually upset about? Pinpoint for me exactly what you're upset about. I'm in here again, aren't I? You've been called me in again to school. So is it annoyed that we've... Are you annoyed that we've actually called you in? Or is there anything else that's annoying you? Or is it just the fact that we've had to ring you to get you? I've left the other kids at me now. I'm so sorry. You haven't actually acknowledged still that she feels you don't like Bradley. And I think that that is the basis of this. Right. Her feeling is that you don't like her son. So she's annoyed that you've called her in. But she actually, I, I suspect, wants to know why you don't like Bradley. Or, her, you know, this is her right. perception. Okay. So, you know, you, you need to so pick I up from there. You need to say to her, oh, I'm so sorry. That we're, we're all in this for the best for Bradley. And, and why do you think right. I don't like him? Right, OK. Then you, we're all in this to help Bradley. We're all, Bradley's the main person in this, and we all want to work together to help Bradley. So, um, are you are you are you annoyed that we've actually called you in, or or do you still do you think that we've got something against Bradley? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm annoyed that I'm in, but what is the problem with Bradley? Bradley's just been a bit disruptive in class. He's disrupting the other children. Um, we have tried certain strategies to help Bradley. When he gets frustrated, we, we take him out of the situation, we calm him down with an LSA, he draws or... He... I didn't know none of that. And I, I was wondering if there are any strategies that you use at home that we can work together and it would be better for all of us, including Bradley. So if there's any information you can give us... His social worker's given me one of them star charts. Have you got star charts? That's fantastic. Does it work at home? Does he respond well to star charts? Yeah, actually. He does. Yeah. yeah. He did the other day, anyway. Well, that's fantastic. The whole idea of this meeting is that you're comfortable, I'm comfortable, and we can work together for the best for Bradley. That was really, really good. But your natural instinct there was it would have been... Yes. Prickle, wouldn't it? How yeah. dare oh, yeah. you criticise? Yeah. Whereas this way, you encouraged her, which you weren't expecting, because you were expecting that kind of, yeah. how dare you talk yeah. to me, I'm the teacher attitude. Yeah. Yeah. But she didn't. Definitely. And you could see that she was genuinely yes. understanding yeah. what she was saying to her and really cared about Bradley yeah. and yeah. was trying to sort it out. So you did. You know, you responded to that. You came up with some strategies. You checked with Yvonne that that was you know okay for you yeah yeah and then you kept doing it because actually just... that time you did have to go round a yes. couple of times yeah, yeah, yeah. from this course one thing that I've actually took away and thought yes okay I could apply this is to actually listen to the anger and then say to them okay well what you're saying to me is this that they're able to get past the anger and actually get on to what the problem actually is rather than just venting lots of anger and going round in a circle. Next time I feel I have an angry parent walking towards me, me. I will definitely greet them with a big smiley face, make sure that I am welcoming to them. I will then definitely encourage them to tell me exactly what's going on. I will summarise it back to them so that we're clear that we're all talking about the same thing. I will be questioning them so that I've got all the information that I need. And um, I'll be very careful not to use any negative vocabulary.